getting real sick and tired of these COVID wait lists when we called in this time to Agua Caliente and got our name on the 1-3, 300 max list, I thought I'd be sitting down in a very efficient manner, but I ended up still waiting for two hours to get a seat. There were 19 people on the 1-3 list and 17 people on the 2-5 list, but the 2-5 list was for not, it was never gonna happen because there's three tables of Omaha currently running. I mean, who even plays that game? We're still getting situated at the table when we look down at Ace of Diamonds, Ace of Clubs from the low jack. I raise to 12. There's one caller in between. The button now believes there's no way that I just sat down and got a good hand. He raises me to $30. Kind of small. I debate flatting here, but I decide to re-raise since I'll be out of position the entire rest of the way. I make it $80. He calls. Heads up to the flop here with 176 in the pot comes six six deuce we have an over pair it's pretty unlikely that he has a six 65. in his range here so i decide to bet small i bet 65 dollars he thinks about it for a second but then ultimately shoves covering me and uh, not really much of a decision here for us so i snap call turn comes the eight of clubs the river comes yeah, the okay. eight of diamonds putting two pairs on the board he ends up showing an over pair pocket tens that's gonna go down in flames and we're gonna scoop that $616 pot right out of the gate. He ended up being a very nice guy. His name was Tony and said that he watched the vlog. Thank you. Second hand, we look down at pocket kings from the cutoff. 560 in our stack now. The under the gun position player limps. Middle position player raises to 14, so already a dream situation for us. I three bet here to $31, not too big, just wanna get people in, maybe go heads up to a flop, but unfortunately nobody wants to and they all fold. 580 now in our stack, we look down at king 10 of clubs from the small blind. Middle position player limps, I raise it up to $17 trying to isolate, the big blind calls and the middle position player folds. So we're going heads up to the flop with 37 in the pot, which comes queen, seven, deuce with two diamonds. Not the best board for our specific hand, but I'll see bet here once for $17. And uh, luckily the other player has none of the board and folds, so we drag a $54 pot fairly easily. 595 now in our stack, we look down at the beautiful king eight of spades. No one ever said that. Uh, from the cutoff position, there's one limp. I raise it up to $12. The button and the limper both call, so we're going three ways to the flop. Flop comes 10, 3, 6, 1 spade. We hit nothing but some ambitious backdoor ideas, but that doesn't stop me from firing $14 here into 40, and the button calls, so we're going heads up to the turn. 68 in the pot, the turn comes a 7 of spades, giving us a gutter to the 9, and also the flush draw comes in, so now I definitely am not going to be slowing down, and I bet 50 into 68. I want to size up here and try to get his one pair hands to fold, because obviously uh, we don't have a made hand yet, so we need a fold to win this if we don't improve on the river. The button has other ideas and decides to min click it back to $100, which screams a good hand. The value hands that he's representing are obviously sets and straights, straights being 4, 5, and 8, 9, but obviously we block the 8, 9 having the 8 of spades in our hand. Having the 8 of spades in our hand also blocks him from having some combos of flush draws, so he's probably uh, on the strong side here of his range. Even if he does have a strong hand though, we can definitely cooler him on the river. There's a lot of ways we can get him here. So I'm gonna put in the extra $50 to win 268. Pretty much a no brainer. And uh, we're off to the river. River comes the three of diamonds, which is a complete blank for us, unfortunately. And it pairs the board, so it gives him a boat if he had a set. He's definitely not gonna be folding to a bluff here. I give up and check. He continues now with his story of a strong hand and bets $100 and I have no other option other than to fold. Four hundred and sixty-five now in our stack. We look down at pocket fives from the under the gun position. I'm kind of on tilt from this last hand there. I didn't end up making my hand, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm gonna raise it up to $10. And uh, middle position player now raises me to 35. 
Normally, I'm gonna be folding this a high percentage of the time. I don't wanna go out of position uh, with a small pocket pair here, not really getting the right price to call. Considering this guy probably has a very uh, strong hand here, probably ace king ace queen at the minimum probably has a big pocket pair so if we hit a five we can probably get all the chips in here and that's exactly how i'm feeling right now so i put in the additional 25 dollars and we're going to a flop 74 in the pot the flop comes about as horrible as it can come ace queen six not only do we not hit a five an ace and a queen are out there there's no way he doesn't have us beat here uh, i check he bets 30 and he takes down that 104 dollar pot We move seats now to get a better view for the vlog, and of course the guy who ends up taking our seat gets pocket aces the first hand that he plays. So if you guys appreciate me moving for the better angle, uh, please take a second to like this video and comment the word bullets, B-U-L-L-E-T-S, so I know who you guys are. Thanks. 430 now in our stack. We look down from the big blind with 9-5 of diamonds, a beautiful, beautiful hand. There's one limp and it folds to me. The limper is a 70 year old woman, so I don't really mind playing her heads up because she'll likely fold to aggression on later streets. So that's what I do, I raise to 14 and she ends up making the call. No big deal, we're going heads up to the flop. Flop comes four of diamonds, three of diamonds, jack of hearts. Obviously a pretty decent flop for us. We have a flush draw. I decide to bet $12 and she calls. Okay, going heads up to the turn comes the king of clubs which isn't ideal because we don't exactly improve, but the continued aggression usually works against older players at this casino, unless they have the nuts, of course. So I bet $25 into 53, thinking it's gonna get the job done a high percentage of the time. This is not one of those times, and she calls. It's a little bit concerning. 103 now in the pot, the river comes the three of clubs, pairing the three and breaking out our flush draw. Given that she's called me twice now, I think it's likely that she has a pair of kings, maybe more, so I check, I give up. Surprisingly, she checks behind, so there's a chance now that we're good. She ends up showing king jack offsuit for two pair. She's gonna take down that $103 pot. Obviously, I'm not calling if she bets the river there, but there's no way that she should be checking back that river there. Three sixty-five now in our stack. We look down at king queen of spades from the small blind. Under the gun raises to twelve dollars. Middle position player calls, and I have a good enough hand here that I want to raise. And I don't really want to go three ways to the flop, so I bet forty-five dollars here. But unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. We're going three ways to the flop because they both call. So we're going out of position three ways with hundred and thirty-eight in the pot comes a decent one for us king of clubs four clubs five of spades we flop top pair i bet around half pot here a little bit over i bet 77 the initial razor folds which is good we were a little bit worried that he could have had an ace king type of hand um but he folds um but the person who called 12 dollars and then called our raise pre on his left he ends up making the call for 77 dollars okay heads up to the turn with 292 in the pot comes a jack of diamonds and I think we still have the best hand here. The opponent in the hand called 12 pre and then called my raise. So his range is pretty capped. I think it's likely that he has a club flush draw here. So I'm gonna put him all in for his remaining 155. Uh, and he pretty quickly calls. Hopefully he has the club draw. River comes the nine of clubs, which is a horrible card. Hopefully he doesn't have the club flush draw and just has some weird other hand that we have beat. Obviously the flush gets there now, but also the random queen 10 makes a straight. Um, and he's gonna show the queen jack of clubs. And of course he's gonna win that pot. He ended up having 13 outs there on the river. So 26% equity. Uh, he's gonna win that one of every four times. This just happened to be that one time. He's gonna drag that $602 pot unfortunate for us. I top back up for another $200. We're into the game for 500. We have 300 in front of us. 710 of hearts is the next hand that I'm showing you here. I feel ambitious, so I raise it up to $10 and the big blind calls. Heads up to the flop of $21 comes 946, all spades. I don't have any spade, but when he checks, we obviously have a gut shot and the betting lead, so I fire for $10. 
uh, he ends up putting in the call. So we're going heads up to the turn, giving us the straight right away. Comes the eight of diamonds. Perfect card for us. I bet now for value, 30 into 41. And uh, he calls again, so we love that. With 101 in the pot, the river comes the five of hearts. So now puts a four liner out there. Anyone with a seven in their hand now has a straight. Obviously, we have that bait because we have the straight to the ten. Uh, I can't really decide though whether it's best to bet big or small, so I kind of go somewhere in the middle and fire 55 into 101. He snaps it off and shows 5-7, but uh, we have the straight to the 10, so we're going to scoop that $211 pot. You guys think that it's best to polarize there and go for a pot size bet or maybe bet over pot, or was my 55 a good bet there? We then do something crazy with pocket queens. Under the gun position player limps and I raise it up to $14, pretty standard so far. Then the under the gun position player decides to go for the old limp re-raise move and makes it $42. Considering he's an older player and doesn't have too much more behind him, it's really not that hard of a decision for me guys, like I just fold our ladies face up, right at, right at, I right, showed everybody the dealer kind of made a noise, but that's how it is. If he had more behind, maybe I could call and try to uh, flop a set and cooler him. I think there's like a 90% chance here that he had kings or aces. That's gonna end our session here. We rack up our chips and head to the cage. One, two, and three. Thank All you. Right, take care. We'll All right, that does it here for our session at Agua Caliente. We got into the game for 300. Unfortunately, at the rebuy when we uh, got rivered with uh, that flush hand when we had top pair, uh, we got in for 500, got out for 303, so a net loss of 197. Uh, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Hanukkah, all that kind of stuff, Kwanzaa. And uh, thanks for watching this far in the video. Please like, subscribe if you're new, tell a friend, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.